Welcome to The Kill Count, where we tally up the victims in all our favorite horror movies. I'm James Agenis, and today we're looking at Never Hike Alone 2, released in 2023. Despite the number in its title, this is actually the third installment of the Never Hike fan film series, which includes the similarly length Never Hike Alone and the shorter prequel Never Hike in the Snow. All three were made by Vincent DeSanti of Womp Stomp Films, and deliver much needed cinematic depictions of Jason Voorhees, while the Friday the 13th franchise continues to sort out its legal tangles. Never Hike Alone 2 is DeSanti's final Friday work for now, giving us the long-awaited rematch between Jason and his protagopho, Tommy Jarvis. Never Hike Alone 2 is equal parts sequel, prequel, interquel, and requel. It spans the whole scope of the Never Hike series, and brings Tommy Jarvis together with the main characters from Never Hike Alone and Never Hike in the Snow. To fund the film, DeSanti raised $315,000 on Indiegogo, three times the budget of the previous installment. This feels like the closing of a chapter of a story that, you know, felt like in, a, in some regards, like a little bit of a destiny route for me. He put the money to good use, since Never Hike Alone 2 is the biggest and best of the Womp Stomp film series. It cements their ghost Jason as one of the character's best depictions, and as always, puts drone technology to good use. And while the other two entries had solid kills, this one's gore is on another level, thanks to the returning special effects makeup team, Nora Hewitt, winner of Face Off and effects artist for Dylan's New Nightmare, and Cody J. Wilkins, who also worked on Halloween 2018. Between them and production designer Rachel Leggett, Never Hike Alone 2 delivers all the kills you'd hope for from a Friday the 13th. Can Ghost Jason scare up enough- Ow. What? Where's our Christmas presents? Oh my god, I haven't gotten the team their Christmas presents! But I can fix that with today's sponsor, Raycon! I can't believe I haven't thought of this already. After all, as someone who uses my Raycon earbuds daily, I know their comfortable in-ear fit and premium sound quality makes them the perfect gift. I even gifted my mom a rose gold pair that she loves. And thanks to their limited edition holiday bundles, I'll be able to stock up on tons of options for less. Let's see, the everyday audio kit is a great option if I want to get a little variety for everyone. Or I could go for a few of the everyday headphones Phones three times kits and stock up on headphones for the whole crew. Of course, I can also shop from Raycon's newest offerings, Raycon PowerTech and Raycon Home. With the bundles, I can grab an everyday charge kit, which includes their Magic 180 power cable, Magic Charger, and Magic Pad Pro. Or I could venture outside the bundles and grab their room air purifier. Hmm, but which to choose? Really? Again? We'll take one of everything. Okay, well, let's just wait for Christmas and see. You don't have to wait for Christmas, though. You can get premium audio and power tech at a great price this holiday season by going to buyraycon.com slash deadmeat to get 15% off site-wide. Can Ghost Jason scare up a satisfying conclusion to this series? Let's find out and get to the kills. The movie begins down at the old slashing hole of Crystal Lake. Young Tommy Jarvis is fishing for hockey masks, and they did a great job styling this kid like Corey Feldman in the final chapter. Too bad he gets yelled at by older him. What did I tell you about coming out here alone? It's never hike alone, not never fish alone, and you're not our dad! God! From his perch atop this nearly submerged dock, seriously, how is that thing like flush with the lake? Tommy the Younger starts using naughty language, like the J word. Is it because of Jason? J-Man answers for him, popping up and dragging the Tommy boy into the lake. Shnikey! Tommy the Elder dives in after him, and Match cuts himself awake in a great shot that was replicated in Dylan's new nightmare, which Vincent DeSanti helped produce. Tommy wakes up in what might as well be a holiday basket, because it's full of Easter eggs. His bulletin board is littered with franchise references, including homemade kill counts, and a suggestion that Roy Burns, the Jason imposter from Friday Five, was under the spell of a curse. Ooh! One article mentions his mom Tracy Jarvis, who was killed off screen in the final chapter, and another asks what really happened in New York. City in 1989. I'll tell you what happened. A goddamn garbage ass movie is what happened. Tommy can live with the nightmares, but he won't stand for Jason wetting his bedroom. Oh, wait, I guess he will stand for that. He faces down Ghost Jason, looks him in his eye holes, and sweetly whispers, Tattle card! Tommy Jarvis is once again reprised by Tom Matthews, who played the role in Friday 6, Jason Lives. In the time since Never Hike in the Snow, Matthews has helped Friday dreams come true for other fan filmmakers. I have paid it forward myself and, and, and was executive producer on one to help out of my, my own money. My, because my, I, I, I applaud the effort. In addition to producing My Special Boy, he also reprised the role in Zorin's Social Mediasicus 2 and Friday the 13th Vengeance 2 Bloodlines. 
Leave my girls alone! Tommy copes with his bad dream by driving up to Camp Crystal Lake with a gun and a cooler full of opening credits. He clears cabins like he were a summer camp cleaning service and makes sure the dock hasn't slipped into the lake yet. Good, still only mostly submerged. Now he can shoot at some water and call it a day. Bang bang! Just as he's about to go buy more tape for his conspiracy board, Tommy's oldest non-immortal enemy shows up. What did I tell you about coming up here, Jarvis? Yeah, yeah. Sheriff Rick Cologne is again played by Vincent Guastafaro, also reprising his role from the Sixth Friday film. Wherever the red dot goes, you bang. All these years later, he's still yelling at Tommy. It says to stay the fuck out. Wow, he sounded exactly like a G.I. Joe there. Get the fuck out of here, you stupid idiot. Clone is tired of the hockey mask horseshit and tells Tommy to leave. He does so with maturity and grace. Neither of them realize they're already being watched by the deadliest creature of all, a vlogger. I love how the camera HUD fades into view as we re-meet Kyle McLeod. Wilderness finds are really expensive, so what them all costs. Unintended. Kyle was the main character in the first Never Hike Alone, which means we're currently in prequel territory. Watch out for pod races, y'all! As Kyle sets off to live out the first film, Dr. Diana Hill grieves her missing son, Mark. We met these two in Never Hike in the Snow, the prequel to this prequel sequel. Um, Mark Hill kicked off that short by eating Jason's axe, and we last saw Diana mourning her son's Photoshop skills. EM Tommy is surprised to see Dr. Hill back at work so soon, but not everyone processes things by jogging in the woods with a shotgun, dude. Also back to work, our ill-fated medic Denny and Axel, who's working on being better than his aerobics ogling coroner namesake. You're gonna do just fine, doll. Please don't call me that. Sorry, I'm working on it. Too bad we know he'll relapse in the future when we catch up to the end of Never Hike Alone. Look at the beard on that vagina! Back in the woods, outdoorsy lovebirds Jamie and Gino are having some intense grab ass when something busts. Don't worry, Jamie. It ain't Gino. And it ain't Jason yet either. It's a very injured Kyle McLeod. Can someone please tell him where he is? Uh, Forrest. God. Damn it, Gino. Kyle's injury indicates this scene takes place after he was stabbed in the book in Never Hike Alone. But he's still alive enough to tell Gino to run and provide a demonstration. See, Gino, that's how you help someone. Before Gino can head east to the tent and deliver his gal a deep dish sausage, Ghost Jason polishes off the big spoon with his machete. Little Spoon Jamie only gets a scream in before the cut, but unless she comes back and never fuck alone, consider her donut dumped. Great editing joke there, which reminds me of the humor in Friday 6. I got a kick out of seeing these two in this fan film, since I'm a fan of their work. Work. Gino's played by Adam Michaels of At Adam's Art Box, who's at horror conventions all the time. He's acting against his real-life wife, Kali Malia, who often helps him at his booth. They're very friendly. Go say hi. Back at the hospital, Dr. Hill is barely keeping it together, mistaking Axel for her dead son. See, Mom? I knew you nailed this. Ah, uh, don't worry, lady. It's just Axel and his silly face. She steps outside for fresh air and chats with the hospital's other visibly haunted employee. Hey, that's cool. As long as they don't go messing with kill count numbers. My son is still alive. Wait, what? He, like, ate an axe. I know my son is dead. What? Lady, make up your mind! This is actually a really nice scene for the character, as she struggles with the state's classification of her Schrodinger son. Before Tommy can commiserate with his own Crystal Lake trauma, they receive an emergency call. Ranger service reported an injured hiker way out on Cunningham Road. Cunningham Road is obviously a reference to Sean S. Cunningham, who directed the original Friday the 13th. Wonder if that road intersects with Victor Miller's Crossing. Tommy hangs a left on Trivia Avenue and finds Ranger Jackson waiting with the injured Kyle. She hands him over and tries to get on her way, but Jason pulls a Michael Myers and pops up in the back seat to kill her with an arrow through the throat, just like his ghost mama taught him. The Ranger bleeds to death before honk honk honking on heaven's door. Tommy thinks he hears murder noises, but ignores them, and while his back is turned, Jason rolls the Ranger's vehicle away? What? Maybe he's just trying to match the continuity of Never Hike Alone 1. We're finally caught up to its final scene, and those lights weren't in the background back then. He should have done it a shot or two earlier, though. We now get a mini remake of the original scene, complete with the same dialogue. What the hell is going on back here? Only this time, Tommy's more angry. What the hell is going on back here? The other big difference is the sound of Jason's footsteps. He's no longer a fucking J-Rex. Tommy's ready to burn rubber, but there's a zombie goalie anxious to see him. Jason drags Tommy out for a proper reunion, and when Axel tries to see what's going on, he gets Axeled in the chest. Not sure if I should double count this kill, since I already counted him and never hike alone, but fuck it. They went through the trouble of reshooting it, so the least I can do is recount it. Same logic applies for the other paramedic, Denny, who gets a slightly more graphic end than her prequel predecessor. She still dies by sound effect, but this time it's crisper than a toasted Grissini. 
we also see the aftermath of it. Tommy comes to the rescue with one more repeated line. Remember me, asshole? Then he drives off into daylight, springing forward into the same lighting of the first film's final shot. Jason tries to be a persistent little bugger, but he's no match for the power of the locomotive. Tommy's ambulance reaches its final destination, terrifying Dr. Hill while she's listening to her dead son's voicemails. Wait, does her phone say Friday the 14th? Jason, it's it's not even a work day, dude. Get back to your shack. Tommy doesn't apologize for almost pet cemeterying the doc. He just yells obvious shit at her. Make sure he lives! Yeah, like, that's kind of her whole job, dude. Sheriff Cologne has a dream about a bunch of missing Indiegogo backers and his deceased deputy, Alan Mabry, who got golden chainsawed and never hike in the snow. Mabry's played in both appearances by Brian Forrest, who also portrays Ghost Jason whenever it isn't DeSanti under the mask. Also, since some of the medical center scenes were filmed at a fully functioning hospital in Lake Arrowhead, Forrest was able to provide some unusual charity. He's walking through like it's like a Make-A-Wish Foundation is Jason, like <laughs> visiting people in their hospital room. Yeah, Clone's dream turns into a nightmare about Tommy Jarvis stealing his catchphrase. He wakes up to a message from TJ saying this isn't the final chapter because Jason lives, again. He gets to the crime scene and sees all the bodies, but it's not the J-Man he suspects. Instead, it's the guy he's been cyber-stalking and keeping a whole accordion file on. Put out an APB on Tommy Jarvis. The alleged maniac convalesces in the hospital, where he dodges questions from Nurse Hobbs. What kind of accident was it exactly? She's played by Rakafat Abergal, who was a co-producer on this movie and who writes, directs, and stars in her own horror films as well. Dr. Hill finally corners Tommy about what's going on, so he comes clean and recaps the entire Friday the 13th franchise. Well, I guess he leaves out all the space stuff, the Deadeye connection, and of course, the telekinetic teenager! He does take ownership for creating Zombie Jason, though. I fucked it all up. Haha, <laughs> yeah you did, dude. You straight up Frankenstein that motherfucker. Hill has a hard time believing him about Jason, but is nonetheless shocked to hear about her son's likely fate. Are you saying that my son was murdered? Diana Hill is played by Anna Campbell, who's voiced characters in video game franchises like God of War and Apex Legends. She's now Friday the 13th royalty, co-starring with DeSanti in the 2021 fan film Jason Rising. <laughs> She's a great actor who makes for an excellent scene partner with Tom Matthews. This movie really benefits from them sharing multiple scenes together. The two review Kyle's vlogging GoPro to see if he caught any proof on camera. He's a YouTuber. A what? Um, it's an internet thing. Hey, it's a living, okay? They find footage of Kyle disturbing Pamela Voorhees' beauty sleep, which we saw happen in the original Never Hike Alone. That revelation forces Tommy to interrupt the latest figment of Kyle's imagination. Jason. Tell me what you see. Uh, a severed head? Yeah, looks like demonetization to me. Kyle says he can't remember where he saw the head, so Tommy tells him to pack his still bloody bags for a Camp Crystal Lake field trip. The authorities are already looking for Tommy, so despite their best efforts, they're caught on their way out of the hospital. Reason cycle! Jesus. Kyle tries to tell them all the true meaning of Friday the 13th, but they refuse to listen. Until the power goes out, the lighting gets stylized, and Jason himself walks in. He's carrying the severed head of a cop named Deputy Boltman, proving to the rest of the police that he's the real deal. Holy shit. Deputy Boltman was seen earlier, and he's played by Douglas Tate, who briefly portrayed Jason himself in the final shot of Freddy vs. Jason, where he leaves the lake holding Freddy's head. In fact, his death here is a direct reference to that shot. Tate also stunt-doubled Michael Myers in Halloween Kills, transformed into a werewolf in Annabelle Comes Home, and is the Jack Link's official Sasquatch. <laughs> Jason's here, and he's ready to be a bad boy, bad boy. He sinks his machete into Deputy Thompson's shoulder, and then punches clean through Deputy Stout's chest, adding new meaning to the term body cam. Tommy tells everyone to run, but this is the coolest shit Cologne's ever seen. He watches as Jason disembowels Nurse Hobbs, giving us this sick sickle shot. Huh, she's just kinda leaning on the J-Man there. Well, he was good to his mother. Makes sense he'd be supportive. Cologne doesn't get his ass in gear until he gets some encouragement from Tommy. Come on, you fucking idiot! By then, Jason has thrown his Leslie Vernon special into security guard Justin's back. The others, I guess, abandon him there, so I'm just assuming he dies. Womp womp. Stomp stomp. Films. They flee to the parking lot and discover Jason's latest power. He can strip car batteries with the speed of a NASCAR pit crew. There's a spare in the ambulance, but it's parked too far away, at least until Cologne attempts to throw Jason off their scent. Suck lid, fuckhead! For the first time ever, someone uses dualies against Jason, and it's exactly as useless as you'd think it would be. Jason chucks his axe at Cologne like it were a Ralph Lauren 
Polo. And not even that can stop Clone's obsession with his catchphrase. You bang! Jason's never been a catchphrase fan, though, so he overpowers Clone and squishes his head into cool red water, sending this ombre to eternity for men. For real, though, that was a dope kill. The distraction works well enough to allow the Jarvis squad to speed off towards Crystal Lake. Haha, <laughs> Jason, you couldn't catch him! Might as well take a long walk off a short dock. <laughs> oh, hey, I wasn't serious, dude. At the campsite, Tommy asks Dr. Hill to stay behind while the boys get ahead. Actually, I'm I'm down the drag. No, you're gonna show me where the head is, remember? Shit. Kyle McLeod is once again played by Drew Leahy, whose fandom fame got him a role in another Friday Adjacent project, 13 Fanboy. Sorry, I didn't mean to go all <laughs> fanboy on you. 13 Fanboy also features Vincent DeSanti, and uh, you know, some, some other guy too. Kyle and Tommy search the cabins for Pam's head, which gets Jason's mommy senses tingling, so he fast travels out of the lake to his watery bachelor pad. <laughs> Thank God they had that sign there, I would have missed the lake four feet away. By the time their headhunt ends with a picnic basket, Yogi Voorhees barges in, avoids a shotgun boo-boo with his axe, and gets them to exit at stage left out of the cabin. Kyle gets knocked out, but Tommy has enough fight in him to blow off half of Jason's cheek. The plastic surgery only makes him angry, and he responds by breaking Tommy's gun in half. <laughs> it is pretty funny when Tommy whips the rest at him. <laughs> Jason strong! Jarvis makes a break for the archery range, not knowing that Jason's been practicing in the offseason. He should have watched Never Hike in the Snow. Jason pins Tommy down with two arrows and is about to Hanzo Shimada his ass when Dr. Hill comes in to give him a splitting headache in the exact same way Chris Higgins did back in Friday 3. Hill thinks Jason is dead, but Tommy's been in enough of these movies to know he's just extra pissed now. Luckily, Kyle's awoken from his XYZs and has a WMD. You looking for this? A weapon of motherly destruction, but why it look like monkey? Jason takes the bait, and Kyle leads him to the beach where Pamela simply cannot stop losing her head. Tommy tells Kyle he can end all of this by destroying the mummified mommy melon, so when Jason emerges from his watery break room, Kyle lets him do the honors himself. Mamma mia! His mother's head falls apart in his hands, exposing her, uh, uncooked ramen brains? Then Pam's poltergeist appears to help cross Jason over to a peaceful afterlife. Now come on, now come on. Jason's spirit is finally at rest, so maybe we'll see an end to all this violence. Haha, <laughs> psych! Tommy gives old maggot head a taste of his own camping equipment and knocks his block off once and for all. Damn, a lot of head trauma in this one, huh? We get a news report with a surprisingly accurate kill count and a whole crap load of cameos from Friday vets. First are the voices. So many voices! It's 15 past the hour. We're we getting some breaking news. It was a long night for anyone unlucky enough to be a witness. Twelve people have been confirmed dead. Among them are Adam Marcus, director of Jason Goes to Hell, Lauren Marie Taylor, who played the adorable Vicky in Friday 2, Ron Sloan, he of the Friday 5 Dirt Bike and Dylan's New Nightmare casting session, and Tom McLaughlin, rock star director of Friday 6. Of course, the on-screen newscaster is also a cameo and a former pro. It's Tracy Savage, who was in Friday 3 and who went on to have a career as a journalist. Savage segues to the mayor, another cameo. To the victims and their families, I offer my sincere condolences. That's Larry Zerner, who played Shelly in Friday Part 3, the man responsible for Jason's hockey mask. Zerner has since become an attorney and translates legal updates on the franchise rights for fans. Of course, we've got to talk about the biggest cameo of them all here. Right behind the mayor is our very own Zorn Gavoyich as FBI agent number one. Wonder if he's wearing pants. The less Zorn the FBI agents clean up the crime scene, Dr. Hill finds closure with her son's death, and Kyle gives Tommy his GoPro, complete with all the evidence he'll ever need to prove Jason was real. Thanks, but... That's behind me now. Wait, what? No, no, hey, that's still a perfectly good GoPro, dude! You could've just wiped the SD card. Even though they just met, surviving Jason makes you hugging bros. And Tommy finally makes peace with his childhood bowl cut. But far beneath the waters of Crystal Lake, perhaps Jason lives again. Or maybe just find something mildly funny. The movie ends, but mid-credits, we get a vlog from Hikerman5000, a fan whom Kyle shouted out just before he learned to never hike alone. So let me catch any noobs out here. That's right. Looking at you, Hiker Man 5000. Since Kyle has quit the YouTube grind, Hiker Man Ryan is planning on picking up where he left off. Ryan out! I'll count you later, Hiker Man 5000. But for now, let's get to some other numbers. Jesus! How long have you been standing there? The whole time. They're very quiet. Twelve people died in Never Hike Alone 2. Of those, seven were men and five were women. That gives us this pie chart that you should never bake alone. Surprisingly, we've only seen this count in gender breakdown once before, in Friday the 13th Part 3 no less, which starred some people who cameoed in this film. 
that's fun. With a runtime of 73 minutes, we had a kill on average every 6.08 minutes. I'll give the Golden Chainsaw for coolest kill to Sheriff Cologne. I absolutely loved the obliteration of his skull, and evidently, so did most viewers. His death is the most replayed moment on the upload. Dalmachete for lamest kill goes to Justin the Security Guard for getting stabbed in the back and dying by assumption. At least let Jason step on him or something. And that's it. Never Hike Alone 2 came out earlier this year, and after seven years with the series, Vincent DeSanti has no further plans to return to Crystal Lake. But maybe, since the legal rights seem to have finally been worked out, we can get Jason on the big screen again at some point during my lifetime. Either way, until next time, I'm James A. Janice. This has been The Kill Count. Hey everybody, thanks a lot for watching The Kill Count for Never Hike Alone 2, starring top build, Zoran Gavoyage. That's me, I was in this movie. This movie was all about my character. Yeah, Vincent had emailed Chelsea and I to also be in it, and it got lost in the emails in October. And it wasn't until a few weeks ago that I was going through emails and I was like, oh, I could have been in it. So, my bad. Thanks, Vincent, for trying. Yeah. <laughs> Man, he did such a good job with this thing. Yeah, always does. Mm -hmm. I want to thank some patrons like Kevin Smart, Kevin Script, Christopher Bueno, Kate Ekman, Twasn't But a Scratch, Alan Kramer, Clown.Likes.Rob.Zombie, Kenji, Tobias Foster, and the little ferret pal going to court Lawyerdale? What is, what are you guys doing with these names? No, that one's legit. That one's legit. <laughs>